What's going on? Today I'll be talking about how you can save tens of thousands of dollars while in college uh, just by using a very untraditional spin on house hacking. And with that, you're going to be able to completely eliminate your room and board or your housing expenses while in college, as well as start investing in real estate uh, from a very early age. So if that interests you, look no further, because today we're going to be talking about house hacking. Now the purpose of this video is not just to provide an explanation of house hacking, but I really want to show why it makes sense uh, for a college student to pursue it and at the same time show you why it's completely attainable on a college student's budget. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing some details on my first uh, real estate investment experience as well as dive into some Excel financial modeling uh, to really show you uh, how much money you can save with this. And in doing so, I really hope to encourage more college students or parents to pursue house hacking for their students uh, because I think it's a great alternative to leasing or renting a place. So without further ado, let's get started. What is house hacking? House hacking is a real estate investment strategy uh, that allows you to purchase a multifamily uh, rental property, uh, typically a property that you normally could not afford uh, traditionally. You register this rental property as your main form of residence, and then you have tenants or renters uh, that produces rental income that offsets your mortgage and your other living expenses. So virtually you're living for free. In doing so, you're gonna be able to squeeze out every ounce of value out of that home. Now that's how it gets its name as a hack because it allows you to have tenants in your main form of residence. It allows you to produce income and build net worth, and at the same time, live nearly completely for free. Now typically when you think of house hacking, you might think of a duplex, a triplex, or a quadplex. And those are great because they allow for separate living quarters uh, between the landlord and the tenants. However, what differentiates house hacking in college and what makes it very unique is that you can perform a house hack with just a single family home instead of a multifamily rental property. Now there's also some tax incentives associated with uh, house hacking, including the interest tax deduction expense, as well as depending on uh, your city ordinances, uh, you can register the house hacking uh, rental property as an owner occupant, uh, which allows you to save a ton of money in comparison to registering the home as a rental property. Now this brings me to college. Room and board and housing expenses are traditionally the second largest expense associated with pursuing a college degree. And to the average college student, they're spending roughly $9,000 a year annually on living expenses. Multiply that by four, uh, that's $36,000 a year, or by three, $27,000 a year. Uh, that's a lot of money uh, left on the table. Now, per, by pursuing house hacking, you can completely eliminate that housing expense. At the same time, build up an equity stake in a home. And that's what makes it a great alternative. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, Nick, this is great, but how am I supposed to afford a down payment on a home? After all, I'm a broke college student. I can't afford to spend ten, twenty thousand dollars on a down payment. And you'd be right, but that's the beauty of house hacking because it allows you to make much smaller down payments on a home as opposed to the 20 or 25% that you traditionally would have to make on just a regular rental property. Now, this is a little bit out of scope of this video, but I would highly encourage you to look into FHA or VA or USDA loans because they allow you to put anywhere, uh, down payment wise, anywhere between zero to 3.5%. Now for me, I ended up going the conventional loan route because I was able to make a down payment of 5%. Okay, so here's what the home looks like. It's a three bedroom, two bath home, uh, very close to campus. It's about 1,500 a square feet. Uh, I ended up having two of my best friends live with me. Uh, they both pay rent, one $675, the other one $625. Uh, there's two full bathrooms. Uh, there's a, a living quarters. I tried to make it uh, presentable because I wanted to ensure uh, that this is not just uh, student living, but also during the summertime, I have an Airbnb that I rent out uh, for just those two months. So this is kind of tailored to Airbnb. Downstairs bathroom, it's a full bath. You can see the shower right there through the mirror. Downstairs bedroom. I made sure each of the rooms had a desk because I was really tailoring it uh, towards student housing. So overall, you can see that this home was pretty decent for house hacking uh, because it's just a general, really solid home uh, for student living. Uh, it's really close to campus, so that was the main selling point. I really wanted to ensure that this would be a place that I wanted to live, for, live in, so that way I could market it to college students and ensure I was capturing that rental income. 
So now let's dive into some of the math behind house hacking. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump into Excel real quick. So an important note before we get started is that all of these assumptions are based after just three years. And the reason why it's three years is because I ended up purchasing, purchasing this home as a freshman in college. Uh, so I only have three years remaining. So I wanted to tailor the math uh, to equate to that. Now you could change this number to four, two years, whatever it might be. I'm gonna be kind of working my way from the left to right. The home price uh, was 185,500 bucks. That's how much money I paid uh, for the home. And with a down payment of 5%, again, I went the conventional loan route. Uh, this could be less or more depending on uh, your financial situation. I felt comfortable doing 5% because I knew uh, that I was able to afford an upfront cost because there wasn't a lot of uh, home uh, repairs that need to be done. But depending on your situation, you could put less upfront if you know uh, that there's gonna be some expenses that arise uh, with home ownership. But always make sure you have some money left on the table because there's always stuff that is unexpected. So with that 5%, the down payment is $9,275. I like to think of this as just the initial equity stake in the home. So the loan amount uh, was $176,000 over 30 years or 360 months at an interest rate of 4.99%. I understand that this interest rate is somewhat high, but remember I am a college student. I don't really have a proof of income and 4.99% uh, uh, is high, but that makes sense, right? Because uh, I'm a risk uh, to a lender and I realized that and so the cost of debt has to be reflective of that now if you're uh, Able to achieve a lower rate. Uh, that's currently what I'm looking for I'm trying to refinance the home maybe get into three percentages uh, That would be great uh, because that would just lower the monthly mortgage payment and in turn increase the cash flow on the home All these assumptions right here are going to be calculating the mortgage payment to calculate cash flow now the rental inputs uh, This I split it up because there's three bedrooms in the home. I split it up uh, into breaking it down for each tenant. So in this case, I have three rooms and three tenants. Uh, the first one's paying $675 and the second one's paying $625. Uh, the difference there is just one of the rooms is a lot bigger, so I factor that into the price. Now the third one, that's how much I'm paying. I'm paying zero. I'm paying zero. So we can change this and if we wanted to calculate imputed uh, cash flow, which is pretty much the cash flow if I paid rent myself, or if it was a traditional rental property, uh, we could change that number, let's say 650, and change the cash flows as a result. That would be calculating the imputed cash flow. But for now, I'm gonna leave it as zero. So that's $1,300 of rental income each month. So this $1,300 is gonna be flowing up to the top of our rental income or our net operating income statement that we have here. And pretty much what it does is gonna be calculating our income and subtracting our total expenses to calculate not op net operating income. So the rent to income, $1,300, our portion of utilities here is 110. And so what I did here is that, at least in my rental agreement, I had my tenants pay a third of their utilities. There's three of us living in the home, it just makes sense. And so that equates to $110 that they pay me uh, each month. Summing those together, I get to 100, or excuse me, 1,410. Now there's some expenses associated with home ownership. In my case, property taxes, $215, insurance, 37.5. Uh, utilities, $166. Again, I'm only paying a third of that. Now the other expenses, this is $101. This is things like mowing, uh, internet, trash, and that equates to $101 a month. So my total expenses, uh, summing those together, is $520. Now the difference between the total income and total expenses is our net operating income, and it's $890 a month. Now if I subtract out my mortgage payment of $944 for $945, my cash flow is $54 a month. So that's how much money I'm spending each month out of my pocket uh, for living in this home. Now, I wish it was positive. In my case, it's not, it's slightly negative, but there are some inputs that we could change to help increase this. I mentioned earlier that I'm gonna be changing my uh, interest rate. In fact, I'm gonna be lowering it down, hopefully to around 3.75%. And you'll see just by changing this interest rate, my cash flow goes up positive $75 a month. So there's some things that you can change uh, if we lower the down payment or increase the down payment, that's going to factor in as well. But in my case, I'm going to move this back up to 4.99 and keep it at $53 because that's what I'm currently at as of right now. Now let's go ahead and compare this $54 a month uh, to a renting or leasing a place and see how much money we save. So my cash flow of $54 times the 36 months, or which is three years, equates to roughly or just under $2,000 over the course of three years for living expenses, which in my opinion is pretty good. 
Now, if we compare that to leasing, which is the alternative, I said I'd probably be spending $700 a month. So $700 is average for my university, but that's below average nationwide. In fact, the average is roughly $750, which equates again to $9,000 a year. So that equates the $700 is $25,200. Now the difference between those, I have the savings highlighted down below right here, is $23,000 over the course of three years. I'm able to save $23,000. But that's actually not all, that's just the cash flow, right? That's just how much money we're saving cash flow wise. If we factor in the equity build that we're building up uh, by paying down the debt, that's where the magic happens. And that's where you can turn this investment opportunity uh, into something magical. So I'm gonna go ahead and go on to our next tab here that I have highlighted is equity. Okay, so here I went ahead and made an interest and debt pay down schedule. Uh, you'll see that it's gonna cover 36 months, or again, that three years, you can change this to 48, the 24, whatever it might be. And what I'm calculating is I started with the beginning balance, or so the initial balance of the loan of $176,000 that we have on the previous page. And then I'm calculating how much equity I'm building up after each month, and then overall after the three years, just by paying down the debt. So what I did here is I calculated based off of my $994 um, monthly mortgage payment, how much is actually going to the principal. So we see in the first month it's $212. And that gradually increases as we pay down more of the loan. And then slowly over time, you'll see after the first year, I'm at 11, or excuse me, $12,000 of equity in home, $14,000 of equity in home, and then the final year, I'm at $17,500 of equity in home. Now what's great and why I highlighted in green is if I sum up all these numbers here, over the course of three years, I'll be paying down uh, $8,219 in the home, and that's just gonna increase my equity stake in the home, which is awesome. So $8,219 is how much equity that I will have built up after the end of these three years. So right now, I'm currently at the first, almost at the end of my first year, I'll be there in two months, and so I'm almost at $12,000 of equity in the home, and then hopefully at the end, I'll be at $17,500 of equity if everything goes as planned. However, there's one thing that factors into this, not just paying down debt, but there's another way to build up equity in a home, and that's through multiple expansion. That's if the home value increases a relative to the price you paid. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to my final uh, tab that I have here on this Excel document, and it's gonna have a case study. And what I have here is I have three different cases uh, they are gonna show the effect of multiple expansion on the value of this house hacking property. So the initial stake, equity stake here, that's $9,275. That's my initial uh, upfront cost in purchasing my home uh, with the 5% down. Obviously, the less you put down, the better your returns are going to be. Uh, just that's the use of leverage. So it's starting at $9,275 down payment. I calculated how much uh, debt I'll be paying down over the course of three years, which is $8,220. Now, in the first scenario, we assume that the present value of the home, or what I initially purchased it for, was $185,000. And at the end of the three years, I assumed, you know what, let's play it safe. Uh, let's say uh, that the future home value is $185,000 as well, which is a pretty safe assumption. So there's no change in value of the home. There's no multiple expansion. So now, the ending equity is just going to be the initial equity, so that down payment, plus whatever was paid down, plus the change in value. So the ending equity value is $17,500 if there's no change in value of the home. Now, if we subtract out those cash flows that we calculated on the other page, which is roughly under $2,000, then our loss or gain on investment is $15,500. $15,500. Now that shows you at the end of three years, I made that much money, hopefully, if it works out, if there's no change in value. So that's approximately a cash on cash return of 1.68 times. Now in scenario two, what we have instead is that the value of the home is increasing to 205,000. So if the value of the home is increasing by $20,000, that's factored into your equity stake. So your ending equity of the, in the home is $37,500, subtracting out that cost of equity or the cash, cash flows over the three years and living in the home, it equates to $36,000 a year. So if the value of the home goes up, just by roughly, that's roughly just under 4% a year over the course of three years, then you see that I'm making, or potentially walking away with $35,000 in college. Now that's a great investment, at least in my opinion. That's hard to replicate in just buying stocks and bonds or something like that. 
and that equates to 3.83 times return over three years. So I'm quad nearly quadrupling my money if this case or this scenario turns out. It could not, it could be higher, it could be lower, who knows. I will say one thing, the home that I bought appraised for higher uh, than I bought it by roughly uh, $15,000. Uh, so that's a good sign. And then the area that I live in is increasing in value, again, roughly 4% a year. So that equates to roughly around that ballpark of increasing in $20,000. So the final scenario, if my home value decreases by $20,000, so I sell the home for $165,000 after three years, then I'm down $20,000. My ending equity down 2,505, and my less the cash flows, I'm out $4,400. But in comparison to spending $25,000 leasing or renting a place over three years, it's a no brainer. Even if the home value decreases this much, it still makes sense. And that's why I highly recommend house hacking while in college, because you're gonna be paying this money anyway. So that's what makes this a great opportunity uh, to get started investing in real estate uh, in college through house hacking. Because you're not just saving a tens of thousands of dollars uh, in comparison to leasing or renting a place out, uh, but you're also starting to build a net worth uh, by servicing debt and increasing your equity stake in the home. Uh, so I would highly encourage other people to pursue this option or at the very least consider it. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Uh, let me know your comments or questions down below. I wanna see like how I can improve that this is something that even people wanna watch. So thanks for watching, uh, enjoy the day, uh, and get after it, bye.